I love giving a room a new fresh look by changing out curtains. Today I'm going to show you how to make a curtain which looks like a blind. So it's a faux blind, but it's super cute. In our office we have two windows that have a little bit of a glare on the computer and so I wanted to come up with something that was a little different than just a curtain. So today I'm going to show you how to make a curtain that looks like a pull-up blind. The reason I didn't go with a blind is I really don't like how a blind is cattywampus sometime and not symmetrical. So this curtain has the effect of a blind, but it's nice and symmetrical and it looks pretty cute. So let me show you what you need to get started for your window. First of all, for your fabric selection, I picked something a little bit heavier than a normal cotton weight. This is a decorator fabric, not quite as thick as upholstery, um, but it is a little thicker. And you're going to want a coordinating backing. So this is my front, this is my lining, and you're going to want interfacing. I highly suggest thinking ahead and ordering, uh, this is called Woven Fuse, and you order it from Got Inter facing.com. I have the link down below. On my first prototype window, I didn't have time, or I should say I didn't uh, let myself have time. Uh, I was a little impatient, so I just grabbed some Pellon interfacing from the store and basically hated it. Um, it wrinkles, it's too stiff, uh, so this is woven fuse. So to prepare your fabric, we need to cut your fabric one inch wider than your window and one inch longer than your window. So my window is 23 by 47. So I have the fabric and the lining and the interfacing all cut to be 24 by 48. You're also going to want to have some sort of cording that makes it look like the pole portion of your blind. I am just using cotton crochet thread um, and you're going to need, for my window, which is 48 inches uh, tall or uh, long, I need about three yards. So get some sort of uh, cording, some sort of uh, cotton thread uh, to make the, the look of your pole shade. We need to fuse the interfacing to your main fabric, but before you do that, make sure that your main fabric doesn't have any wrinkles in it. Uh, smooth that out uh, by pressing it, and you're going to just need to follow the instructions of whatever interfacing that you're using, but get a nice smooth uh, bond of your interfacing to your uh, main fabric, and it will make a really cool uh, finished product. I have the interfacing on the wrong side of my main fabric and I have my lining cut. Now we need to pin right sides together. I like to pin at least oh every eight or so inches all the way around. When we start sewing, I need to make sure that this is up on my uh, curtain. Uh, this is the up pattern. So I am going to sew starting on the bottom um, about six to eight inches from one side and come around and end um, a, giving it a good 10 inch opening so that we can turn it because this uh, design of the curtain that I've came up with this bottom is going to be hidden anyhow so uh, that's a great place to leave your opening to turn your project so I'm going to pin this and get it ready to sew. Okay, I have everything pinned and getting ready to sew it. Um, I am going to use a 5 8 inch seam, um, roughly half inch to a 5 8 inch seam. I um, I'm using my brother machine uh, that I just got a few months ago. If you're curious about the machine um, on uh, what it is, I do have a review on it on the channel. You can watch that. The link is down below. I put a clip on here just so that I could know where I wanted to start. Again, this is the bottom of my curtain. And so I'm just going to do a straight stitch, um, 5 8 inch all the way around. And when you're doing a curtain and you're going to be turning it inside out, like you're going to be turning a pillow inside out or a curtain, um, you need to backstitch generously at the beginning of your stitch. After 
you get done sewing, when you turn a square project like this inside out, it's always a good idea to just lob off the little triangle corner. And that is why sometimes uh, when I think of it, I like to back stitch uh, the corners just to make sure those are a little reinforced. So just lob off the excess so it makes it a nice crisp corner and then turn your project inside out. And I just poke my finger in each corner and when I get the fabric pushed, just hold on to one of those corners and turn it inside out. Now just take a straight pin and really pull out the fabric. Careful, sometimes you'll pull out some fibers and you don't want to have a um, fray on your corner. Just, but just pull out the corners so that they're nice and crisp. Now I like to just lightly pin the edges making sure that you have a nice crisp seam and then I'm going to take it to the iron and just press my edge. This is the opening where we uh, turned your curtain so I'm going to go ahead and pin this shut so you can have the choice of stitching this all the way across on the machine with a really close uh, straight stitch or you can hand stitch this shut. Since this design, this uh, bottom part is not shown on the curtain, I'm just going to uh, do the fast method and stitch that on the machine. Now I'm back up at the top of the curtain and we need to make an opening for the curtain rod. And I know that this might be unconventional of how I do my openings, but uh, it works for me. So if you have any other suggestions or ideas, I just take a seam ripper and I am going to be using a small uh, cafe rod. I believe this is maybe a half inch rod. And so I just want an opening just enough for the rod. So I am going to um, undo my stitches down to about here, which would be, oh, roughly a full inch. I'm gonna undo my stitches. Then I'm going to take needle and thread and um, reinforce the opening and sew back in my seam. I'm going to go ahead and pull back my stitching. And I just need to make sure that my rod will fit th through there. And that looks great. So now I take my needle and thread with matching uh, thread and I'm just going to stitch two or three times back and forth here at the bottom so that that doesn't come undone. And then I am going to hide uh, the seam here, going to just tack that into place because I just don't want it to pop out and look messy. The next step is where the design starts to come together. On each side, I have put a pin at 10 inches, 20 inches, 30 inches, and 40 inches, but I also put one at 7 inches. When you get one side marked, fold your fabric and duplicate that distance with a second set of pins. So each side is going to have the exact measurements, one pin at 7 inches, 10, 20, 30, and 40. And so what you're going to do, this first one represents where your first fold is going to go down. So we are going to bring this down to the first pin. So we have a pin on the inside fold and we have a pin on the outside fold. And then I'm gonna take these sewing clips. These things are fantastic to add to your arsenal. I have ordered these off of Amazon and I have the link down below. But just put a clip there and repeat it on this side. So we have it folded around that pin and this pin represents the exterior fold. And put a clip there. So then the next step, take your fabric and make this go straight up and down with that pin and bring your next pin down to it. So basically you're folding around this one, make a, like a little sandwich around that one, and the bottom of that fold here is where it meets up. And I'm going to put a pin there. And 
this side here we're going to fold around this pin and bring it up to the bottom of that fold and put a clip there fold around the pin and bring it to the bottom of the fold so then on this side fold around the pin and bring it up to the bottom of that fold we're still on it since we're on this side going to fold around the pin and bring it up to the bottom fold around the pin and bring it up to the bottom but after you get your side clips in, you want to make sure you're even measurements. So we have about 20 and 3 quarters and 20 and 3 quarters. So we're good there. Like I said, I want my two curtains to match. So to match this with my other one, it needs to be 19 inches total. So I want this last row here to look like a blind as well. So I am going to fold that till it's at 19 inches and I'm going to put a clip in that. Okay, we're getting close. So at this point, leave all of your pins and your clips in and turn your project over. After I've turned it over, I um, will get put extra pins in it if necessary because since I do love crafting um, while I'm watching TV or while we're traveling, just uh, I just reinforce it with some pins because we're going to hand sew our loops here so that we can have the loose effect of a blind. So I have coordinating uh, thread and what we're going to do is we're just going to hand sew our loops up to the lining only. We're not going to go through to our main fabric, so we're going to go lining to lining on each of these rows, and that way it'll look nice and loose and give the effect of a blind. So since this part is on the back of the uh, blind, you don't have to be super precise, but yet you don't want it to look awful if someone is peering through the window. So just uh, get, catch the uh, lining on this side and the lining on this side trying not to catch your main fabric while you're doing it and so each of these uh, loops all the way across so there I've went a couple inches and you can see on this side you don't see the stitching so just sew lining to lining on each of those and then I'll show you the last step I have now finished slip stitching all of my uh, loops. So I can go ahead and take out all of my pins and clips. And then the last step is to put some sort of according through each of these loops to make it look like it is a blind. So I am going to use cotton crochet thread and I'm going to use white because I want it to have the effect but I don't want it to be blaring um, look at me. So just something that'll be subtle. So I'm going to continue using just these clips and I'm going to mark an equal distance in from each side. This is the top, this is the bottom, and these are the sides. So I'm going to mark at seven inches from each side okay it is pinned and marked equal distance um, down the uh, from each side and it needs to be kind of precise but not real particular because it's going to give the effect of a blind so cut a piece of cording um, or crochet thread in my case uh, that is about three times the length of your curtain and you're going to have to find a needle that has a large enough eye but also is pointed because what we're going to do I'm going to go ahead and just put a simple knot in the end 
and that is going to start on the back side down about an inch or so just so that it has some stability and I'm going to pull the thread through bring it down and come up in the same spot on the fold so this is the fold so go directly down from your clip if you need to you can mark it uh, since it's hidden mark it with a pencil so bring your thread through and it you can adjust this later but uh, just kind of pull it to where it's just a little bit loose so there's number one and now we're going to come down bring up the next fold and on the fold bring in just another little bit of fabric and it it's a big needle so it's going to go through the interfacing and it's kind of uh, tight okay we're down here to the last one I'm going to go ahead and loop to the back and just end my cording on the fabric here with just a simple knot but I'm going to adjust my loops before I tie off. Okay, so here we have, that's just a little tight, so we're going to just pull it up just so there's just the effect of it being a cord. that looks pretty good so I'm just going to tie a knot here and then you just repeat on the other side okay so there you have your completed curtain slash faux blind I um, had a vision of what I was hoping it to look for and this is exactly what I was shooting for I love the the look of it it's crisp it looks like a blind it's knocking down the glare uh, so I consider it a success for what I was shooting for so your window might be different size uh, so you might have to adjust your measurements obviously but hopefully this gives you some ideas on how you can transform your own window so if you have any questions uh, while you're making yours please comment down below but as always thank you for watching DIY on the house